as is very clearly, try to articulate this very clearly up here with the 37th portion. So we're going to continue here. We're going to move to the book of Hebrews. We're in the book of Hebrews, right? Book of Hebrews chapter 3. So we gave an introduction to it. We're going to continue this lack of, lack of faith equals lack of repatriation. Lack of faith means that we deny our divine heritage. No matter how much we talk about federation, no matter how much one to get involved and do this or try that, you have to begin with first things first. You know what I'm saying? Our divine heritage must be the first things first. You know what I'm saying? We have to prepare our hearts and minds. This is a spiritual movement. You know what I'm saying? At its core, at its base, it's a divine movement. That means if we don't have the oracles of Jah, the word of Jah, whose word are we moving on? You know what I'm saying? Whose word are we moving on? Now, this portion that we're reading right here, um, Hebrews chapter 3, it says, Wherefore, as the Memphis Kedus, the Ruach HaKodesh, or in your Bibles it might say Holy Ghost, that word ghost used to strike out whether... In, 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 in truth or in spirit in your mind, strike that out and don't read Holy Ghost, but Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit in the English. Memphis Kedus in the Amharic. And Ruach HaKodesh in the Hebrew. It says, it says, Wherefore, as the Holy Spirit saith today, if ye will hear his voice. Now, in the Schofield, it has an X. Subscription X next to two. Now, if you look in the the margin or the center column, and you look for X, right? X it says verses seven to eleven, right? It says Psalm ninety-five verses seven to eleven. Get this: verses seven to eleven here in this portion is equal to verses seven to eleven in Psalm ninety-five. So if you turn your Bibles to Psalm 95, you'll see where the epistle writer, most people believe that it was Hoaria Paulos, that this was his word to the Hebrews or to his fellow Jews. You know, saying to the Beta Israel, to those faithful Hebrews, because they were, they were Jews that denied the Moshiach. Like even today, there are Jews who deny the Moshiach, Yeshua. You understand? Know but there were Jews who accepted the Moshiach, who believed his word. You understand? Know and these are the Hebrews. And this is why this epistle, this letter, is specifically to that Judeo Christian church. You understand? Know Speaking to ones like I and I, especially as Ethiopian Hebrews and Ras Tefari. So here it says, Wherefore? As the Holy Spirit saith, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts as in the day of, as in, as in the provocation, provoking job. In the day of temptation, the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works, saw my works for 40 years saw my works for 40 years. Now, what's also interesting is that the Ethiopian World Federation, right, and the Ethiopian World Federation is all connected with this. You understand? This is better to, this, this is to help I and I better understand, you understand, the true foundations and the true groundation of the Ethiopian World Federation in order to make the Ethiopian World Federation fulfill its true purpose, we have to fulfill ours. It's like speaking of the church. The church is not the building. You know what I'm saying? The church is not the, the physical premises. You understand? Same thing for federation. It's not a building. You understand? It is, it is the faithful fulfillment, you understand, of, the, of this word right here, which begins with our divine heritage. So if you look at this document, it was established in August 1937. We showed you this before, right? We showed you this before. Let's show you this again. August 1937, and you see it right there, right? August 1937, by this man whom his majesty, that's the preamble right there, 
right? That's the preamble where we speak of our divine heritage, right? And by this man, Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. Name Malaku means my his angel means his angel, Malaku, like Malachi or Malachi means my angel, Malaku means his angel. Now, most of y'all might not know or might have heard about Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan from this ministry, but ask yourselves, how come you, if you have not heard of Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan in um, Rastafari or more of him, Ask yourself, why is that if he is the one whom Haile Selassie sent? He did, Haile Selassie did not send Marcus Garvey. Haile Selassie sent Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. That's another indication of why repatriation is offline. You know, why, why the movement, you understand, coming out, is the movement is in a state of inertia. How we have gone astray as Rastafari from the teaching of his majesty and that the tribulation, you understand, that we're going through is largely because of our disobedience, our disbelief, our unbelief, our lack of faith. Overstand that. So it's his picture that ones need to put up. You understand, it's his, it's his story, you understand, that we need to know about because he is the one whom Haile Selassie I sent for us and gave us this right here. This right here is the kingdom. This is the foundation of the kingdom. You remember in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, will you now restore the kingdom to Israel? And what did Yeshua say? Yeshua says, it's not for you to know the times of season that are in the what? The power or the authority of the Father. So the fatherhood of God would restore to us the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not self-righteousness, but his righteousness. And what? All things shall be added, right? And all other things shall be added to us. So note that, overstand that. Now we point out this particular book, and we get into the 12 spies, we're going to go into a little bit more, right? When we deal with the 12 spies, we're going to touch on this book by um, Douglas Mack, because it gives... A, a very good, um, a very good testimony. You understand? We've we've studied these things, these matters uh, intensively, and we were so amazed as we studied more and more about the Ethiopian World Federation, the land grant, His Majesty, and now studying the Torah. It becomes so clear. It's like it's like we, we didn't listen. A whole generation didn't listen. Now we have a whole generation which has passed on. We've heard of Mother uh, Mama Bubbles. She also has transitioned, at least according to the reports that we heard. Dr. Robinson also has transitioned. These are elders. You understand? These are some of the pioneer elders. Now, it's interesting because there's 12 pioneer elders, I mean, 12 pioneer settlers. Now, what's interesting is that there were 12 spies that were sent into the land, too. What's interesting is that 10 brought back what kind of report? 10 brought back evil or false reports, but two brought back true reports. You understand? Know and of those two, we find Dr. Gladstone Robinson. You understand? Dr. Gladstone Robinson, Fikra Selassie, to be one of those two, like Caleb and Joshua. All right? So Shashimani is still the issue. And we're going to reissue this vid right here, but we have more information now to add to it. But just as a historical item, it's good to check this particular vid out. There's also some other vids that we'll recommend um, to you, like this one, Man of the Millennium. You might have seen this one, Man of the Millennium. Check this particular vid out as well, Man of the Millennium, by some native Ethiopians. Um, Amen. Oh, now let us continue with this Torah portion, reading and feeding. So, lack of lack of faith equals lack of repatriation. You understand? Lack of divine heritage equals disorganized, dysfunctional Ethiopian World Federation. Period. People don't like it. 
You understand? But perhaps their problem, problem instead of checking out for themselves and finding out the truth of it. You see what I'm saying? If there's a, if there's a problem, you first have to, you have to recognize or acknowledge it. You know what I'm saying? You have to confront it. You know what I'm saying? You have to assess it. You know what I'm saying? And then you can do something about it. Instead of just mixed up moods and attitudes and rare, rare, getting upset, so forth and so on. Listen, this is our life. And this is for our children, our children's children. You understand? Know this is very, very serious because this has to do with the Almighty God. You understand? Know the Almighty God and His Christ. And we, the lost sheep. You understand? Know we, the lost sheep. Because a lot of folks, you know, they, they, they receive. They receive this message, and you know, you know, they. But this question is like, well, if that's so, then how come things aren't moving like they should? Well, here's the answer right here. So here, Hebrews chapter three says that our fathers, right, our forefathers, even in this movement of Rastafari, our forefathers tempted him. And they provoked, and they proved him, and they saw his works 40 years. And I just thought of something, 1937, if you add 40 years to 1937, you know what I'm saying? What do you have? You have roughly 77. You know what I'm saying? You have roughly 77. Is, is, is my math fair correct? You have like 77, two seven clients. Well, that's now, it's interesting also to see that. That's after now the revolution. I've said this before, and I'll say this here for the record. That in, in, in thinking about things and meditating on things, if we had been faithful and been like the Jews who call themselves Jews with Palestine, if we had been that way with Ethiopia and our land grant, the revolution, the so-called creeping coup against his majesty, the Illuminati plot against the king of kings, would have never, ever been able to get off the ground and happen. So we might blame the Ethiopians at home, but we share, and our ancestors share a, a, a very sizable weight of that blame as well. And now we, if we continue to do the dysfunctional things that some of the previous generation of Rastafari have done, willingly or unwillingly, there's a worse judgment for I and I. You know what saying? This is one of the reasons why we have to preach and proclaim this word. Jah wants this word to be proclaimed, and this is a mercy. This is good news. You understand? To know the truth. This is good news to have an opportunity to do something about it, to make a change, a real change. You understand? To have a change of mind, to be born again from above. So 40 years is mentioned right here. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. Jah was grieved. Do you think that his majesty was grieved? with a generation of Rastafari, think about it. Be honest. Not, this is not personal against any particular elder. Different ones have their favorite elders, so forth and so on. But there's no favorites. no partiality. This is based on the word of his majesty, the word of his Christ. Do you think that Jah was grieved with that 40 years, the previous 40-year generation of Rastafari, black people, Ethiopian World Federation, you think so? Do you think? And said, they do always err in their heart. They always are making an error in their heart, in their consciousness. You understand? They're making an error in, in spirit, in their mind, in their, in their um, emotion, in their will. You understand? That's the soul right there, linked with the heart, the mind, the will, the emotions, right? And it goes on to say, and they have not known my ways. They have not known his ways. You know, you can read the speeches of his majesty all you want as Rastafari, and that's good. But if reading the speech and learning from the speeches doesn't provoke you and prompt you to study his word, then you, you must not know how to read. You, or you're not accepting what you read, or you are being um, w willingly rebellious against the king. In, in, in other words, you are like, like John is saying right here. He was grieved because they always err in their heart, and they have not known my way. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter. They shall not enter into my rest. 
you, you, we know the story of how His Majesty sent certain ones back to the West and said, thank you for coming, thank you for all that you have done and attempted to do, but next time, send the right people. And one of the elders confessed to me, one of the elders confessed to me that when, um, because he's one of the 40-year elders, that when they had heard that word of his majesty, they were upset. They, they were confused. They did not understand it. It's like almost like a love-hate. They still said, but because they had heard, next time send the right people, they did not understand what the right people are because they did not understand the righteousness of Jah. You know what I'm saying? And the righteousness of Jah is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. And his word is our righteousness and faith in that word. And acting on that faith is fruition. You know what I'm saying? And that leads to fruitfulness. You know what I'm saying? And fulfillment. You see, so we're in a state of suspended animation of prophecy. You understand? Yovas and, and Jah is still being merciful with us. Because he doesn't have to. He could be... But a whole generation has gone, just like in this Torah portion right here. So it says, take heed, brethren. So take heed, brethren. Take heed, sisteren. Take heed. Least or lest there be in any of you, in any of you, an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, in departing from the living Jah, the living God. What do most people say? When you talk about repatriation, you talk about Africa, or you talk about going to Africa, people always say, we're money. We don't have enough money. Isn't that what, what, what a lot of y'all say and a lot of us have said? I've said this before, too. You understand? Hearing what the elders say and, you know, um, you know, we have that loyalty to the elders, but we have to grow up and then, see, we have to qualify the elders by God's word. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what qualified the elders, not just somebody who's old. That's an older you understand? But an elder is one who is founded and grounded and, 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 and is like a master of God's word. Not just that they, that they know it, but they work it. They act on it. They do it. They have the experience. They know the word and they have the experience. So therefore, their guidance is the guidance of God because it's pointing you to his way. You understand? Not their way, you understand, or their personalities, but it's pointing you to his way. You understand? And that's a true elder. You understand? So we call a lot of folks who are old, you know what I'm saying, maybe gray here, we call them elders. Yeah, and elder so and so, and elder such and such. You know, and sometimes you have fools when they're young and they, and they manage to get old, and they're fools when they're old. And this is not personal, it's not pointing to any particular elder. You understand? Know this, this is the point of order. You know what I'm saying? This is the point of order, what I and I are saying. So don't think we're speaking about this elder or that elder. That's on you. You understand? So the first thing you should do is head rest with John and ask John's Holy Spirit to guide you in the Word so you would know the truth for yourself. Then there will be no confusion, you understand, about who we are and where we stand in this struggle. So much things to say right now, right? Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So the reason that the Beta Israel, the reason why the lost sheep wandered for 40 years, both then and now, is the same very reason, because in them there was an evil heart of unbelief. You understand? That means not accepting it as true, lack of faith, lack of amen. You're saying lack of Amen, and the Amen, Revelation 3, 14, is Yeshua. You're saying is Jesus, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, the Word tells us that you can recognize the Father. There's Abba, the Father, but no one comes to him except through Yeshua HaMoshiach. So we say Halas Selassie is the Father, and yes, we say that Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachim, without apology, but we read, his majesty says, Christ. He, he bigs up Christ. He puts Christ in that biblical, prophetical first position. It says, Jesus' name, Yeshua's name is above all names that can be named in heaven and earth. And I asked this before, and I said, well, if that's true, that God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Son is Yeshua, and it says that his name has been raised above every name that can be named in heaven and, and on earth. 
but can't God's name be named in heaven and on earth? So that means even to God, the name of Yeshua is his salvation. Yeshua is John's salvation. Now, some of you all have to think about what I and I just said. What, what do you mean by that? John don't need no saving. But the word says that Yeshua is his salvation, that John will reveal and declare his salvation, and thus the king of kings has. So we are without excuse, brothers and sisters. We need to get our house in order. And even the most progressive or more progressive of the Rastafari mansions, you will see that there's that faith base amongst them, whether it's the 12 tribes, whether it's the Bobo Shanti, it's that faith base um, uh, amongst them. And the reason why a lot of you say, well, yeah, I, 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 I check for them, but I, 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 I go to their parties, or I go to such and such, but I, I, I don't want to be down with them. Like some of you will say overtly, like, I, I check the 12 tribes. It's probably because of that discipline of the faith. Maybe they're too churchical, you understand? Maybe they're too, you might say religious, but there's too much spirituality there. And some of you will say, hey, I want to be free to do what I want to do. You understand? Now, let's remember that you have an example of the very same type of personality, and it's not too late to have a change. It's not too late for a metanoia. You understand? Before, it's too late. When it's too late, it will be too late. You understand? Um, so before that time, but here is speaking about the Israelites, right? It's speaking about those in the wilderness, speaking about 40 years, and we tracked this 40 years, 67 to 2007, right? That there was an evil heart of unbelief, and, they, and that was departing from the living God. Now, when I mention thing about money, you all know what money has on it. In God we trust, need we go over that again? In God we trust, right? And it says one on the one dollar bill. So most have thought we don't have enough money. You know how many meetings of so-called federation folks, everybody else, and everything is almost down to money. You understand? Know almost down to, you know, it's it's like our pray. If we're lacking money, our prayers are not even that strong. If we have money, then we're skipping and dancing and everything, and we don't really get it. We don't really get it because we departed from the living God. You see, we find the living God in here, not in here. We find the living God through this, not through this. You see, and the living God, when we do that which pleases him, he gives us all of this that we need and more. You understand? He has, because remember, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. But if we haven't reached that righteousness level, we don't have our access. We don't have our PIN, our PIN number, our access code. We can't access it. You understand? And basically, we're not righteous according to his standard, which is Yeshua, which is the Jesus and his word, then it doesn't even matter. That, that money doesn't belong to us because we may think we're righteous, but we're not righteous according to his standard. He is the one that is the governor of that. He is the one, you understand, that has, that opens the door, that has the keys of David to open or to close. Let's recognize that. All right, so right here it's saying, verse 13, but... It's saying, exhort one another daily. It's saying, exhort. Now, what we said from the first part, exhort means to build up. We have to build up one another daily. Build up. Exhort one another daily while it is called today. While it's called today. And today is today. Yesterday, if you thought about it, that was today. Today is today. And tomorrow, if you think about it, it is today. While it is called today. So every day your conscious and aware is a today. Least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness. And it's interesting that Haywan, Eve, our first mother, right? Mother of all living, the word says, Emma Hiao, that she was deceived. Adam wasn't. Adam knew better. Adam was right there. I, want, I still wonder what was Adam doing? She ate, she talked to the serpent, she ate, and she gave it to Adam. And Adam said, hey, oh, wait, wait up for a moment. Hold up, hold up. Adam didn't say that. Adam ate too. Now, but the Bible doesn't say Adam and Eve were deceived. No, it says that Eve was deceived. Remember, Adam was told the commandment when Eve was just in his DNA. You understand? Know Part of his rib or his DNA. You know, so she wasn't actually there. So somehow Adam must have told her 
concerning this. But he was right there. He wasn't deceived, but she was deceived. You know what I'm saying? Now notice what it says right here. It says, at least any of you be hardened, hard-hearted. You understand? Hard-hearted. Hardened through the deceitfulness of sin because chatiyat deceives one. You all think, well, it's not that bad. Well, uh, like I heard some rosters say, well, the Sabbath, uh, well, it, uh, any day is their Sabbath. They make any day their Sabbath day. I've heard some rosters, some roster so-called elders, ones that y'all will call if I were to name these ones, y'all will say, oh, that's an elder. Well, I've heard some of them say that the Sabbath, any day is their Sabbath. It's like the Gentiles do. They're like, any day is their Sabbath. It's not going to be Saturday. It's not going to be the seventh day. It could be any other day. They sound like the Roman Catholics. The deceitfulness of what? Sin. You understand? The deceitfulness of sin. It's almost like the con game that the serpent gave Haywan is the same con game that, that Mystery Babylon has given many of us who say we have the covenant, who say I and I is Rastafari, and Hala Selassie is our God and King of Kings. But we're not doing the things that he says. And worse yet, most are ignorant. You understand? Are ignorant of this foundation. So lack of faith equals lack of repatriation. You know what I'm saying? And not just if we have faith, we just get up and just go, but lack of even coming together and preparing for the repatriation, doing that which we should. So we look at the Jews who call themselves Jews and with the state of Israel, and we can learn something. I keep saying that some folks don't get it, you know what I'm saying? But I, I'll show you in the Word where Josh says that he would, Raise them up to provoke us, you understand, to consciousness, like, wait, they're not really Jews, but they believe, and God's not partial, but they're able to do it. How come they're able to do it? They study this, and they act on it. When they have faith in Torah, they do it, all right? When we say we have faith in the Bible, God's everent, reverent and everent words, such and such, I believe in the Bible. But then we find something, then we say, well, well, it's not really have to, that's not really have to do that right now because, you know, I got Jesus, and Jesus said I could do whatever I want. You know, you got people talking all kind of crap. You understand? All type of stuff. And that's why John said he was grieved with that generation, like he was grieved with the civil rights generation, grieved with this affirmative action generation, grieved with this 40-year generation, and particularly grieved with us his namesake as Ras Tefari. So we see a whole generation of elders who are passing away. I think there's only maybe a, a few of these pioneer um, settlers, a few of the 12 who are still alive to this very day in, in the promised land or in Shashemeni. So we can see how this is coming close now. Verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christos. We are made partakers of the Moshiach. If, is that word, if we hold, if we what hold, if we seize it, if we, you know, they have a saying in the West, they call it carpe diem, carpe diem. You might hear people say, yeah, carpe diem. It means seize the day, seize the opportunity. You see opportunity, grab it, seize the opportunity. What does it say right here in verse 14? Revelation, um, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14, for we I and I, if you please, are made partakers of Christos, partakers of the Moshiach, partakers of Yetikebal, the anointed one. We are partakers, that we have a part. We're like in a commonwealth. You know what I'm saying? We're part of that. You know what I'm saying? We are partakers of Christ if, if, see, this, this is the conditional. If people say the, the love of God is non unconditional, I don't know about that, because otherwise, why would there be an if? And so we are partakers of Christ, regardless of whatever we do, whatever we think, whatever we say. It doesn't say that. Well, you know, if the Lord He knows our heart. Yo, get rid of that kind of crap. That, that's crap talk. Learn what God really says. And so, you see, it's interesting. Somebody will come along and say, well, John's love is unconditional. And some of you have listened to all of this and been reading it, and then you'll believe them when they say the love of God is unconditional, there's no condition on it, blah, 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 blah. You'll believe what they're saying, and there's no divine word on it, there's no authority on it, but you'll believe what they say. 
You know how we'll believe what, even though we've heard the teaching, even though we can study the teaching for ourselves, we'll believe what somebody else says. Why? Because that's what you want to believe. And that's what happened to the lost sheep for these 40 years. That's exactly what happened. But I and I is like Joshua. I and I have to be like Caleb. You understand? And we're about ready to go into our promised land. You understand? For real. For real. I mean, this is the reality. You have to declare this word. Why? Because he says so. Because John says so. It's not I say so, it's he say so. But he's showing us what has happened. You understand why a generation, the same generation that saw all of the works of John, they saw the Red Sea part, they saw wall, walls of water stand up, they saw Pharaoh, Pharaoh's host get drowned, they saw probably even the Nibiru sign, the, the Kokeb, the star. You understand? They saw all these things, right? But still, because of their unbelief, they could not cross the Jordan River and enter into their promised land. And here at the 37th Torah portion, we learn the reasons why, and this still applies to this very day in particular. You know, and in particular to the Ethiopian World Federation, to Shashimani Land Grant, to Ainai Rastafari, to the Ethiopian Hebrew people. All right? So here it says, if, so we are made, we are made, not that we are, but we are made. So if something makes us partakers, we are made partakers of Christ if, if we hold, if we seize, if we grab it, if we hold it. That means hold it, but no, oops, I, I dropped it. No, 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 no. If we hold it, if we seize it, if we hold the beginning, the beginning. The Bereshit, the Mejameria, the beginning of our confidence. Of our what? Of our confidence, our ifidence. Remember how we touched on how belief and trust and confidence is all connected. You see, so that reasoning there, we put that down there so that ones who are paying attention will be able to see how this word connects. You know what I'm saying? In the, in the matrix of meaning. You know what I'm saying? So that word confidence it is an aspect of faith. It's an aspect of belief, of trust, of, 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 of admission as true, as truth. You understand? As the word amen means. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast, steadfast, that means firmly, to the end, to the fulfillment, to the very end. You understand? Um, there was that old saying that... Um, uh, uh, what was that old saying? This, this is one of these old sayings that just briefly came to mind, but until until the end, um, until the fulfillment, you, you know, um, while it is said today, while it is said today, while it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart. As in the provocation, harden not your hearts. Now, was there a provocation? Was in our story concerning Shashimani, concerning Ethiopia, concerning His Majesty in this particular time of revelation? Was there also a provocation? Yes, there was. When those twelve pioneer settlers, who were to be the first of us and of our people, wanted to divide the whole land the Shashimani land, amongst themselves and forgot, you know what I'm saying, about the diaspora over here. In a, in a sense, they wanted to divide the land that was for thousands of families and thousands of people among themselves. So that was a provocation. The provocation also, they did not want to submit to the fact that Dr. Gladstone Robinson was to be the administrator of that particular land through the organization. They didn't want to abide by that either. Many said they were federation, but it wasn't federation. Many people have said the land was given to Rastas or Rastafari. It wasn't given to Rastas and Rastafari. It was given to Ethiopian Hebrews abroad, Ethiopians in the diaspora, I and I peoples, Beta Israel. And that's inclusive of I and I as Rastafari, the elect. 
So see, there's a lot of false um, information and misinformation that have been put out there. And a lot of people keep circulating it. How does Lashley gave this land to Rastas, Rastafarians? No, he didn't. No, he did not. He gave it to we, the black people of the world, through the Ethiopian World Federation. Isn't that provocative? For some, when they had heard, remember the first, the first step is hearing, when they had heard, did provoke. When they heard, they did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Howbeit, not all that, not all came out of Egypt by Moses. In other words, it's like saying that not all came to Shashimani through the Ethiopian World Federation or through that particular covenant. They came with their own particular ideas. You understand? They didn't come out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? With whom? With who was Jah grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned? Wasn't it with those who had sinned, who had fallen short of the mark, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? We're seeing carcasses falling here in the North American wilderness. We see the black on black, the murder rate. Uh, abortion, people don't want to talk about it, but, but more of our people have fallen by abortion and other things. I mean, do you think Ja is happy with that as you try to live to your false dead gods, your Gentile gods of money? They say, we can't do it because we don't have enough money. You know, you can't do it because you don't have enough faith. You don't have enough money because you don't have enough faith. Same thing, the, the silver and the gold is Ja's. I mean, have, have you really asked Jah? And do you have faith that Jah is and he exists? Verse 18 and 19 to com complete and conclude this chapter right here. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not, to those that did not admit that what he said was true and did not do it his way. But they made believe, they make believe, they make believe other things. You know what I'm saying? They make believe that this one is international president of the Federation. They make believe that that one, so forth. They make believe. We show them the evidence and the documents, but they want to make believe something. So who is Jah grieved with? Verse 19. So we see, we, we cite this. I and I cite this. We see that they could not enter in, right, because of unbelief. They could not enter in because of a lack of faith. It's the very same reason right now. People making all sorts, oh, we can't go there, or there's this going on, or there's a war going on, or there was a terrorism incident happen, or there's something going on in the Middle East, or, the, or, or Egypt just had a revolution, or Syria is about to, to bubble off, um, Libya, they killed Gaddafi. It, it, what does that have to do with our covenant, you understand, know with Jah in the name of Joshua, in the name of Yeshua. Absolutely nothing. But yet, that is what many of them say. Brothers, watch and pray. Part, the uh, next part coming forward soon. Jah willing. Shalom Rastafari.